It's whisper quiet. Hello. This is just a quick look at a beta tape rewinder slash fast forwarder. This is a uh, Johnson OK33. And uh, I just thought it was a little interesting and neat and um, kind of wanted to show it. It's uh, the biggest unusual part of it is that it has a direct AC connection. Most of the ones that I see run on either batteries or more commonly just have like a DC input with a wall wart. Uh, but nope, this one runs directly on AC. Now, unfortunately, the cover one peg is snapped off, so we do that. And before actually operating it, I kind of want to show the overall features of it, you could say. So it has rewind, stop, and fast forward with nice little LED indicators. It has a stop eject button in addition to the stop button here. It's got what look like legit reel tables here, which is kind of neat. And it's got this. So what this is, is you can mount a little cleaning felt up here, and then you can engage this cleaner button when you hit one of the modes, and it will load the tape up against the cleaning felt. Now, it's a little noisy. But it does work and has lots of torque. My main reason for purchasing this is because Beta has a single goddamn window. So what happens when I find old tapes that have not been rewound, that have been stored possibly in a moldy basement, is that I don't know if they have mold. I used to have a Sanyo Beta VCR that was kind of an old clunker, and I would use that to rewind unknown tapes but that still risked getting mold in the VCR, just, you know, not in the full mechanism around the video head. But with this, you simply push the tape in and it's already rewound, so let's fast forward. Oh, right, this is the one that's stuck. This one's stuck for some reason. The tape inside the cassette is stuck to itself. Uh, it's a Sony, I don't, I don't recall ever seeing a sticky shed Sony, but. Something's wrong with it. So let's try an older classic Sony. Oh look, it needs to be rewound. Just push it down and we hit rewind. It actually looks like it's going the wrong way in the camera. I think the frame rate, it looks like it's spinning this way, but in, in real life it's spinning counterclockwise. Yeah. What? It looks like it's going this way on the camera. Okay. And you know what? I actually haven't tried stop eject. I usually hit the proper stop. And see, you hear that thunk? It uh, doesn't have the best braking system. So a little bit of tape coils up in there. What happens if I do this? Oh, that is violent. Well, the tape didn't escape the little guard there. Anyway, let's look inside. I know you're curious, maybe, maybe not. Well, you're gonna see inside anyway. Two screws, one on either side is all you need to take out. And this top cover, actually I should probably unplug it first. This top cover just comes right off. Voila. Okay, so let's dive into this because there's actually some fairly clever design going on here. Firstly, we've got this little circuit board over here that handles all the electro gear. And I'm going to get into later how that works and, and how you can have a transformer with just three wires on one side. Again, all clever cost cutting, which is, is neat. Uh, let's look at the mechanical part first. So when you put a tape in, it pushes these little side latches down and brings out these arms to hold the tape in place. Yeah, let's try and load you. Yeah. Pretend that one latched. Something's preventing me from latching it. I don't know. But when I hit stop eject, it pushes the tape up 
and unlatches it. But in addition to doing that, it's got this little tapered peg here. And that goes and pushes this little metal brake against the two reel tables. Kind of cool. Oh, side note, this was manufactured September 1988, which feels late for beta. But, uh, you know, the VHS name on this motor tells me that a lot of this was probably originally designed for VHS and then they just, but again, make all this custom molded plastic for beta. It's a lot of work, a lot of tooling costs. So something that's pretty cool with this is that this OK33 branding is all over the inside. Okay, well, it's not on the bottom. You've got it on the motor here. So it says OK33 from J and F Electric, which I guess is Johnson and F Electric Limited. The VHS label, because clearly this was intended for a VHS product and beta was secondary, 1988, makes sense. The board, same thing. OK33G3. Okay, anyway, the mechanical portion is very, very clever. So if I'm, say, rewinding and I get to the end of the tape, what do I do? A normal beta VCR has that foil leader tape and it's got a little, uh, I believe it's like a reed switch that just sits there and detects the foil tape. However, in this case, it uses a, a clever little, I guess you could call this like a pendulum that moves depending on the pull of, of the belt. So if there's more, more drag here, this tends to move to one side or the other. Now, if you get a sudden bit of drag, like it suddenly hits something, it'll move further and it's attached to this little spring-loaded arm that acts the same as the stop switch and unlatches the mode. So let's let's try this out here. First, I'll just apply some gentle drag. See, it moves slightly, and I can stall it right out, but as long as I do it gradually, it's fine. But if I do it suddenly, it stops. Same thing with fast forward. Stall it right out. But if I do it suddenly, it stops. This accomplishes the same thing because there's no mechanical linkage to the stop button from the stop eject. So if I go here and I hit stop eject, it does exactly the same thing. Now, uh, this is just a clever little way of having this control these without a pendulum gear. So this little piece up here, let's, let's take a look. So this top pulley has these two little arms, I guess you could call them. And then this bottom piece, which I'm gonna spin, I guess this way, it's kind of difficult. You'll see has this weird little piece of metal and then a slider. So I can actually slide this out and in, and you see it moves the one on the bottom too. Because this is, there's a mirror image of this on the bottom, or not a mirror image, but this exact setup is on the bottom too. It's sandwiched from both sides. So this, there's another pulley that controls this reel table and it does exactly the same thing, just the other way around. If I spin this way, you'll see it starts to spin this bottom one. And that's because it's hitting these arms on the bottom piece because this is in, this one is, is in. Now, if I spin it the other way, see you hear that click and it starts pulling here. It moved this metal piece in and now it's touching that arm. Now let me spin it the other way and watch what happens. So this, let's get in here, rubs up against that arm, pulls itself out and by pulling the top one out, it's pulled the bottom one in. So now it'll start moving this reel table. And again, if I spin the other way, this, uh, let's see, it'd be this one right here will hit the arm on the bottom pulley and you'll see it move out. See, it's moving out there. Now it's out and now it's pushed this in so that this will catch that arm there. 
Just a neat little design. I don't know if I've ever seen this before, but I'm sure it exists in other forums. Now, the electrical. You know what? I get it. I get why Big Clive takes a photo of the board and then prints it out. This made it so easy to understand what was going on without having to stare directly at the device. I could mark it up on the computer and then go a little too far, install KiCad, and then create a schematic. So let's take a moment to understand electrically how this works. First off, it's got a very odd transformer. Normally you'll see a transformer that has wires on one side and the other side. You have a primary winding and a secondary winding. Usually your primary winding is the uh, higher voltage winding that has the source voltage go in, let's say 120 volts. And then you have your secondary winding, which will have less turns of wire and have a lower voltage come out of it. The nice thing about that is the two windings of wires share a core, but they don't electrically touch each other, so they're isolated. So a transformer is naturally isolating, which is a safety feature. However, you can have what's called an auto transformer which basically means you have one set of wires and you can have multiple taps within that wire. Because like a transformer can have a, what's called a center tap. So your primary 120 volts come in and then your secondary, let's say you have 12 volts come out, like it's a 10 to one ratio. But then you can have a center tap in there that gives you six volts. That's like halfway between the two ends of the wire. I'm not explaining this very well. Anyway, what an auto transformer does is it just throws away one side completely. It doesn't exist. So you put 120 volts across this winding and then you do a tap in the middle. I called it a center tap here, but really it's not perfectly center. And then put that off to a bridge rectifier. Now you'll notice something weird here. Normally what you'd have is you'd have both input AC wires go here and then lower voltage side tie together. Now the disadvantage of this is this could be line or neutral and it's tied directly into this. So this is not electrically isolated from the mains at all. The safety is not paramount with this. But what this does is it actually doesn't connect AC to this until you press one of these buttons. So these switches actually do dual purpose. They're double pull, double throw switches. And uh, the top leg here will switch the AC on and off. And the bottom leg here will reverse the polarity of the motor. So this thick line here on the schematic is the positive. This is the 20 volt rail coming off the bridge rectifier. There's also a little AC switch plug so that if you unplug the AC wire, it disconnects ground from the AC here. I don't quite, I don't, I don't quite understand that, uh, the reason for that, but whatever. Anyway, if you follow uh, this guy here, this is the other, well, let's call this line. I'm gonna call this top one neutral because it's connected here. So line goes up and then splits to both switches. Now, if you push this switch down, then three and two tie together and it completes the circuit. If you push this one down, then three to two connect. So two has line, goes to three, then goes back around and because this switch is in the up position, it goes through two into there. Clever. Now the motor portion has these little LEDs and both these LEDs are tied to the 20 volt positive rail. And so they'll turn on if this corresponding side goes to ground. Now by default, you'll see everything is tied to the positive rail. Both sides of the motor in the off state have the 20 volts DC going to it. And if you push one of these down, it'll switch that side to ground. The LED will light up and the motor will go in the direction because now you have ground on one side, power on the other. And the stop button, besides mechanically unlatching these switches, also discharges this capacitor. So in a normal state with stop not depressed, this thousand microfarad capacitor, this filter capacitor is connected to the 20 volts DC, which you would do in a simple linear power supply like this. The DC that comes off of this bridge rectifier um, will, will have ripples in it, right? Because you've essentially just flipped the negative side of an AC sine wave positive 
but you haven't filled in the gaps. So you, typically you'd have a capacitor to kind of fill in the gaps, right? Uh, during the upswing of the sine wave, it charges. And then during the downswing, it discharges and it kind of fills it in. But to discharge this, when you press stop, it just shorts it to ground. Now there's a bunch of other stuff on this board here that is doing nothing. And I suspect that is to do with this unused DC in connection. So this is a fairly simple version of that. There's also this weird molding there on the board or on the plastic. And there's a 110, 220 volt switch. So there's a lot of circuitry that isn't being used, but this is, I think this is fairly clever. So um, yeah, uh, that's it. I just kind of wanted to show this off because it, 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 it seemed very clever for what it's doing. And I'm not super familiar with uh, VHS or beta rewinders, in this case, a winder, not just a rewinder, because I've never had a need for them. Um, however, with beta, it, it is actually coming in handy as well. Just, you know, rewinding tapes, because when I get them and they're not rewound, even if I am 90% sure they're not going to have mold on them, to not wear out the heads on a very uh, scarce resource, like a good beta VCR, it's it's kind of nice to, to use this machine. Now, will this be snapping my tapes? I don't know. Uh, that to me is the only concern with using this and maybe it will maybe it won't i guess i'm gonna find out but uh it seems at least like it it stops the force immediately like as soon as there's there's that sort of uh hits that wall it stops immediately however in order to hit that wall and in order to move this pendulum to hit stop you've already exerted quite a bit of force on the tape so maybe I should use this for most of the rewinding or fast forwarding and then just like stop it when it gets close. Again, if beta had two windows, it would make it so easy. I know this looks cool. I, I thought this was the coolest looking tape as a kid. It was this weird foreign single window thing. But ah, it's so, so impractical to not see the other, the other reel. Yeah, anyway, now at this point, I'm just ranting. Uh, thank you for watching.